Roids, Juice, Arnold's, whatever name they go by, performance-enhancing steroids are part of a whole different competition that will be waged at the Olympics and other sporting events this year. The battle between athletes looking to get an unfair advantage and the chemists working to catch them. The name steroid actually applies to hundreds of molecules that share a similar four-ring structure. Cholesterol is a steroid, so are estrogens and testosterone. The kind of steroids that dopers use are anabolic androgenic steroids, two words derived from Greek that mean they bulk you up and they give you more masculine traits. What they all have in common is that they encourage the body to build muscle at faster rates, which can improve athletic performance. When these steroids enter muscle cells, they trigger the biological machinery that grows and strengthens muscle tissue. They can also get more oxygen flowing to your muscles and organs and can decrease muscle damage, which helps athletes recover from harder workouts faster. Anabolic androgenic steroids have legitimate medical uses for treating hormone deficiencies, growth disorders, or diseases like cancer and AIDS. But for athletes, there's pressure to always get harder, better, faster, stronger. They also have some very serious drawbacks. For one, they're unfair, so using them will get you disqualified from the Olympics and other competitions. Kind of defeats the purpose of performance-enhancing drugs if there's no performance to enhance. On top of that, liver and kidney damage are potentially serious side effects, as are high blood pressure and an enlarged heart. And these steroids can stunt teens' growth. Performance-enhancing steroids can also have psychological effects. Users may become depressed. Roid rage is real too, making dopers more aggressive, paranoid, and hostile. Most performance-enhancing steroids aren't regulated by the US Food and Drug Administration. They're made in illicit labs or in countries where they are legal. That means researchers and users cannot be sure of their effects or even their precise identity. No one can really be sure that they work as advertised or even that they're safe. The other reason underground chemists make new steroids is to try to beat the tests that catch dopers. Drug testing at the Olympics and elsewhere is done by laboratories accredited by the World Anti-Doping Agency. Their scientists and technicians collect samples, usually urine, from athletes before and during competitions. Chemists use equipment that separates molecules by mass to see what's in an athlete's urine. Comparing the masses of the molecules they find to those of known performance-enhancing drugs lets scientists easily see who's been cheating. A lot of the time, these scientists are actually looking for bits and pieces of steroid molecules because the body changes them chemically before someone pees them out. But what if testers find something already produced by our bodies, like testosterone? Well, steroids made in the lab are not identical to the ones made in our bodies. They have a different ratio of two isotopes of carbon atoms, carbon-12 and carbon-13, which each has a slightly different mass. If scientists suspect an athlete is injecting synthetic testosterone, they can compare the carbon levels of this steroid with a natural molecule present in the athlete's body, like cholesterol. If the carbon ratios don't match, the testosterone is artificial. Anabolic androgenic steroids are just one thing these chemists will be looking for. There's also human growth hormone, EPO, or blood doping. Whatever they use, dopers can be sure that chemists are doing their best to catch them and keep the playing fields, tracks, and pools level. Got any chemistry questions for us? Leave them in the comments and we'll try to answer them in future episodes. For more on doping, head to the link in the description for a new CNN story on steroids, along with a great infographic from Andy at Compound Interest. Thanks for watching.